So today we're going to learn about additional steps to solving equations. Last year, you focused on equations with only one variable and one step, while in seventh grade, we're going to focus on equations with two steps. So let's start with this problem. Please make sure that you are reading through it and highlighting the important information by writing them down in your notebook, as well as following along in our notes, since this process is going to be thinking it through with me and then solving with me before you try some on your own. Alrighty. So Jenny is on the local swim team for the summer and has swim practice four days per week. The schedule is the same each day. The team swims in the morning and then again for two hours in the evening. If she swims 12 hours per week, how long does she swim each morning? So now that we've created the mental movie from our reading portion of the read, draw, write, let's talk about what we can draw to visualize the problem. So we're going to go sentence by sentence. So Jenny is on the local swim team for the summer and has swim practice four days per week. So in one week, she swims four days. The schedule is the same each day. So I'm going to circle that because it's the exact same every day. There isn't anything different on Monday or Thursday or Saturday. The team swims in the morning and then again for two hours in the evening. If she swims 12 hours per week, again, in that one week, she swims 12 hours. How long does she swim each morning? Alrighty. So we know that we can visualize the problem using a tape diagram to represent the pieces of the problem to help us organize the information. So we could continue using a tape diagram to draw out this picture. So if Jenny swims four days a week, looking back at the first sentence, how many boxes would we draw in our tape diagram? Well, we would draw four because there is one for each day. So one, two, three, and four. All right, now the second sentence that says that the schedule is the same each day. So our boxes should also be equal sizes to show that they are the same. So mine aren't really, let me see if I can make them a little more even. All righty, now the third sentence says that they swim in the morning and then two hours in the evening. Do we know how many hours in the morning? No. So what do we use to represent something we don't know? A variable. So what variable do we want to use? Well, since morning is missing, I'm going to use M for morning. So let's just write that over here, that M stands for the morning. So they swim every day in the morning, and I'm going to put that into our tape diagram. So let's use a different color. So they swim morning hours on each of the four days. Well, if we don't know the morning hours, but we do know the two, that they swim two hours in the evening, so how can we show that in our tape diagram? Well, we know that all together that would be the total for the day, so I know that the morning hours plus the two hours in the evening make up the total hours in the day, so we can write this as M plus two. So every day they swim in the morning, and then they do two hours in the evening. Alrighty, so let's look at the last sentence. If she swims 12 hours per week, how long does she swim each morning? Well, if she swims 12 hours per week, what is this information that they're giving us? Well, this is the total hours for the week, so the entire tape diagram equals 12 hours. So I can label that in my problem as the total. Therefore, this entire thing equals 12 hours. So now that we have each sentence represented in our tape diagram, what is the question the problem is asking us to find? Well, it wants us to find out how long Jenny swims each morning. Okay, so now that we have our visual, how can we write this as an equation so we can begin to start solving? Well, we do have four boxes with m plus 2, so we learned earlier that we could write it as m plus 2 plus the second day of m plus 2 plus the third day of m plus 2, plus the fourth day of m plus 2 equals a total of 12. Now, how can we simplify this equation? Well, I see that there are a lot of m's, so I'm going to go ahead and circle all of them and then box all the numbers that we know we can combine. So m plus m plus m plus m. So if I added 1m plus 2m plus 3m plus 4m, all together I have 4m circled. And then if I box the 2s, so 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. Well, I have 4 2s, so I could add 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. 
or I could do two times four, which I know is eight. So now that we've combined like terms, right? We circled everything that was alike and then boxed everything else that was alike. So that's called combining like terms. We are left with four M plus eight equals 12. All right. Well, I see that this is a two-step equation because there are two operations within this equation. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight. Here is an operation, right? This is showing multiplication, 4m or four times m. And then I see addition. So see, here are our two operations. So we have the plus one, eight as the addition part. We have the four times the m, which is the multiplication. So to begin solving equations, I know that my final answer in this equation needs to end up equaling to a total of 12, but we are missing a step in the beginning that led us to this 12. So how can we work backwards to determine what is missing? Well, we know that to solve a normal problem like we did in our do now, we use order of operations or GEMDAS. Remember thinking about our grouping symbols? And so then our exponents that are multiplying and dividing from left to right and then adding and subtracting. Therefore, if we had the amount of morning hours, what we would do is multiply the morning hours by four and then we would add the eight to get 12. So now we need to think about undoing these actions to determine the amount of hours that we started with in the beginning. So if we then need to do the reverse to solve, Let's follow GEMDAS in the reverse. So I'm gonna draw an arrow showing that we're going backwards now to begin solving this equation. So what are the first two operations that we're going to look for in our equation? Well, I see that we are going to look at the adding and subtracting operation, which I already see here as a plus eight. So I'm trying to get rid of the plus eight. So I need to think about what is the opposite of adding eight? Well, that would be taking it away or subtracting. And we call this the additive inverse. I'm going to go ahead and write this down. The additive inverse is the opposite of addition, right? So what is the opposite of addition? Well, we just said it was subtraction. So I'm going to show that in this equation by writing a minus 8. Well, what we do on one side of the equal sign, we have to do on the other side, right? We want to maintain a balanced or a true equation. So I'm going to draw a line through the equal to show that what we do on the left side has to be same on the right. Remember, getting us ready for our algebra. And I know that 8 minus 8 is 0, so I can actually just cross them out. And I'm left with 4m on the left equals 12 minus 8, which is 4 on the right. Okay. Well, what operations would we look for now? Well, I'm going to look at my gem DOS that I wrote, and I see that we would be looking for multiplication and division next, which I see here in 4 times m. Well, let's think about that now. What is the opposite of multiplying? So if 4 times m equals 4, right, let's say we don't know what that number is, then we have to do the opposite or the multiplicative inverse which is a fancy way of saying the opposite of multiplication, which we know is division. So let's go ahead and finish writing these terms in our notebook before we begin dividing. So again, remember what we do on one side has to be done on the other. Our fraction bar is showing that we are about to divide by that number that's in front of the variable, right? Which we also call the coefficient right, the number directly in front of a variable or the number that we are multiplying to a variable, which in this case is 4. So now we know that 4 divided by 4 equals 1. So I'm going to draw an invisible 1 here. We're left with 1m. Since we typically don't see 1 in front of the m, we already know that if there is 1 there, physically there, then it counts as 1m. And 4 divided by 4 on this side also equals 1. Okay, okay. So what does m represent again? Well, if I look back, it says morning, more specifically morning hours. So that means they swim one hour in the morning, okay? So let's go ahead and double check our work and make sure that we solve this correctly. So I'm gonna look over here on this side to just check our answer. So our tape diagram originally said that they work in the, that they swim in the morning and then two hours in the evening plus the morning again plus the two hours in the evening, 
plus the morning hours again, plus two hours in the evening, and plus another, oops, I hit it, set of morning hours and then two hours in the evening. Excuse me, Darce is in my way. Let me adjust this. And we get a total of 12 hours. Okay, well, since we're supposed to be swimming one hour in the morning, let's go ahead and substitute everywhere we see an M with this number one. So I see two, three, four M. So I'm gonna write one plus two, plus one plus two, plus one plus two, plus one plus two. Okay, and I can go ahead and add every single number to see if I get 12. So I get three plus three plus three plus three. Remember, we can add in any order. Six plus six. And sure enough, six plus six is 12. So we did it correctly. Now, if we wanted to save some time, I personally wouldn't go back and substitute it into the very beginning equation. I would use the one that we simplified to once we combine the like terms. And again, I'm gonna follow the same process. Instead of the M, I know that that represents the number one. So I'm going to replace that for number one. And four times one is four, plus eight is 12. And sure enough, four plus eight is 12. So here is a second way that we can check our work to double check that our answer is correct. Alrighty, so now that we have done that, I want y'all to go ahead and finish writing this down, right? I want you to be able to draw your picture, combine your like terms, write your equation, solve the equation, and then check your work using substitution. Okay, so we're gonna go back and try some problems on our own.